Let's talk to Nicole Elliott. She is a private investor and technical analyst. Very good morning to you, Nicole. Hello, Nick. Okay, three thought-provoking slides. As always, let's kick off with the first one. Now, this is the soybean futures. This is on the Chinese exchange. Good, bad, or indifferent? Mixed. Mixed, mixed. And it's very important. And everyone's got an eagle eye trained on. And we've got two very different markets now. We've got Chicago soybeans. Yep. And we've got Dalian soybeans. And you can see what's happening. The price in the States, the supply-demand ratio is at its highest in terms of supply in 33 years. And everybody is short uh, CBOT beans. Okay. okay, that's that side of the yep. equation. I understand that. Then, uh, on the Chinese side, you can see that at the beginning of the year, soybean prices in Dalian, priced as yuan per metric ton, went leaping up from just over 3,000 yuan to exactly 4,000 yuan and have since pulled back. Um, and the reason of that is that uh, China put a blockade on importing uh, well, not a blockade as such, but such ridiculous tariffs. Nobody was going to buy the beans right. in Chinese yuan. So all these soya beans are rotting on the fields in the States. So there's your problem. Now, luckily, we've got this El Nino effect this year, which means that the growing conditions in Latin America for beans are excellent. And they can get two, sometimes three crops a year. So they can really quickly replace what's not coming in from the States. And data out this week showed that Brazilian exports in October alone to China uh, almost doubled from last year to six and a half million tons. I mean, that's a lot of beans. So now looking at this chart, you can see that we're in a sort of a holding pattern. It's a bit messy and the longer term trend is towards lower prices. Yep. Um, obviously, if we come to some miraculous agreement uh, tomorrow when Mr. Trump and Mr. Z, Z are going to have dinner, well, who knows? But my feeling here is from an ultra long pers term perspective, um, we're getting quite cheap in Yuan, okay? Relative to the history of the last 16 years when we've been trading these things in Dalian, we're very much on the cheap side of things. And if I was a trader, if I was an investor, if I was a, a pig farmer, certainly, I would consider building up a stockpile in case the trade war with the states escalates further. So I've got a, a buffer. So I'm not aggressively buying, but I'm looking to buy dips here very much. Understood. So, OK, let's move on to the steel rebar contract. Uh, what's this all about? Right, this is in Shanghai. It's the type of steel that's used to reinforce concrete. And you can see that since the beginning of 2017, we were going up in a, in a channel. I've plotted the mean regression there and one standard deviation either side of that. And it kept pretty much in that train track. But over the last three weeks, it's suddenly collapsed and fallen out of bed. I mean, it's fallen below the lower standard deviation, through a very skinny, pathetic little cloud. Yep. It's retraced 38% of the previous rally. And this is in the space of weeks rather than, than the two years almost. But just for clarity, in terms of the colours of the candlesticks, we've got green. Are these, these are down sessions, not up sessions. They're down sessions. I've done it the Chinese way. My Chinese people like it this way around. Perfect. Um, and the point here, obviously, it has massive implications for the construction industry. But I'd say that the, the, the rally of the last two years on rebar prices has come to a juddering halt and will not recover in a hurry. That's a will shocking not. chart, isn't it? Well, I, if you looked at that in the textbook and didn't know the contract, <coughs> you'd be a seller for choice, wouldn't you? Definitely, definitely. I think there's further to go, especially if we start trading below 3,400 yuan per metric ton. That That is the sort of, I think, the sort of um, equilibrium point at the moment. Okay. Um, but I've never <coughs> seen it. It's a long time since I've seen such a sort of classic chart, I'd call that, where it's like all change. All sorts of negatives. All change, mind the gap, you name it. Yeah. Yep. Understood. OK, let's wrap up with uh, the 10-year Chinese government bonds. Um, now, this is the yield on the 10-year, which should suggest basically an inverse relationship, rising government bond prices. What are you thinking? 
Right, well, the yield topped at 4% quite clearly at the very beginning of this year, and we've been sort of meandering our way slowly lower. Uh, we've got a little head and shoulders at the very, very top. Can you see it's a little yeah. one and I've marked in the Which neckline. Which is a negative chart pattern. That's it? right. And then also you've got a much bigger one and I've also marked in the neckline of the big head and shoulders. Um, this is a very significant top to yep. Chinese interest rates. But I think the more interesting thing is that these today are yielding 3.4%. And I'm amazed. It's so close to what a U.S. Treasury yields. Yep. A 10-year yields 3% and a 30-year 3.3%. So as somebody as old as I am, I can't imagine that you'd be willing to buy a Chinese bond denominated in yuan for pretty much the same, same yield as you would get in a AAA rated US Treasury. Yep. I mean, it really shows the shift in the balance of global power in financial instruments that we've seen, uh, particularly over the last decade. It's really significant. Um, also worth mentioning, Italy tenure is three and a quarter. So that's, you know, so definitely I would say, well, mm, you know, if I'm not happy with Italy, I know, should well, I put China on my menu? You know, that, that would be a possibility. But this, in terms of the interest rate cycle, this, in te technical terms, this is a topping pattern, which would suggest lower rates, right? Very much so. And what it is, as we all know, um, central banks uh, put, decide on monetary policy in order to help the economy um, and you know to ease uh, pressure in the financial markets when they get into a panic um, and so obviously it's all hands on deck here so if you think that things are not going very well uh, and the People's Bank of China is obviously looking at this all the time you'd say well let's cut interest rates a little bit or let's see if we can get the bond yields a little bit lower to help the construction industry, to help the farmers, to help, you know, everybody else. And I think there's a very real possibility of yields on this one to drop to 2.75%. That's the measured target based on the big head and shoulders. 2.75%, which puts it in line with the US two-year today. Right. Um, and a bit above a sterling 30-year, which yields... 2% today. So again, we're very much coming into line with sort of mainstream, well-established pricing of other government bonds and yields. Nicole, we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed.